Thanks for tuning in to our second lesson on kinetic theory. If you haven't already looked at the basics of thermodynamics like um, Avogadro constants and molar mass, please check out lesson number one first. That's my previous video. In this video, we're going to look at the three gas laws. That's Boyle's law, Charles's law, and Gay-Lussac's law. And these laws are going to tell us the relationship between pressure, temperature, and volume of a gas. But they are only valid if we keep the mass of the gas fixed at all time. So that means we're not putting any more gas into the container and we're not taking any gas out. There is an additional condition that's associated with each individual gas law. For Boyle's law, the gas has to be at constant temperature. So that's we compare the pressure and the volume. So physically, this can be achieved by uh, putting the container of gas within what's known as a reservoir. Or you can also put it into a heat bath in order for us to control and maintain its temperature. For Charles's law, we're talking about a gas at constant pressure and seeing how temperature affects the volume. So this gas must be allowed to just freely expand and contract. That's kind of like putting a lid on a container, but allowing the lid to slide freely. And also you can think of a balloon where we're allowing the skin of the balloon to inflate. And finally, we have Gay-Lussac's law, where we have a constant volume, so that pressure is going to vary with temperature. So to achieve constant volume, we can seal the gas within the container with a tight lid. That's kind of like using a pressure cooker at home. So with all those conditions established, let's dive into the first law, Boyle's law. We can use Boyle's law to find the relationship between pressure and volume of a gas. Take a column of gas with a fixed mass and a fixed temperature. And I'm going to depress the piston to half the volume. So that's the particles will collide more frequently with the walls of the container. So they now collectively exert more pressure. We can conclude from this that as the volume of the gas decreases, pressure is going to increase, making them inversely proportional. So P pressure is proportional to 1 over volume V. If I just bring V to the left-hand side of this equation, PV will equal a constant. So in other words, if I multiply the initial pressure and initial volume of the gas, that will give the same value as multiplying the final pressure and final volume. P1V1 is equal to P2V2. Since pressure is inversely proportional to volume, we can sketch the graph like this. If the gas is at a higher constant temperature, we shift the curve up because the pressure is going to be higher. But physicists, we tend to prefer linear graphs, so you might see a graph of pressure plotted against 1 over volume. Pressure is proportional to 1 over V, which gives a straight line through the origin. And again, if we have a higher constant temperature, the graph is going to shift with a higher gradient. So this is all Boyle's law for us. Now when a gas is at a constant pressure and we want to compare its volume and temperature, we need to use Charles's law. Let's say I have a container of gas with a lid loosely placed on top. And it looks like I have drawn a pot here, but that's great because that's a perfect example to illustrate Charles's law. Let's crank up the thermal energy supplied to this gas. At this higher temperature, the gas particles will collide with more kinetic energy and with a greater force. So these particles will push the lid harder with a greater force, therefore expanding the volume of the gas. 
So the conclusion from this is that as temperature increases, volume also increases. They are proportional. Bringing t to the left-hand side by dividing, I get a constant. So Charles's law says that the ratio of volume and temperature is constant. And V1 over T1 is V2 over T2. And just a quick reminder here that temperature needs to be in Kelvin and not degrees Celsius. The graph of volume against temperature is linear. If I want to maintain a higher constant pressure for the same temperature as before, I need to squeeze the gas particles tighter together. So I need a smaller volume. And on to our final law uh, to relate pressure to temperature. We need a fixed volume this time, so we need to screw the lid on tight, making sure that the gas cannot change its volume. By increasing the thermal energy, the collisions of gas particles will become more frequent and they can collide with a greater kinetic energy. This means pressure increases. So as temperature increases, pressure increases. So pressure is proportional to temperature. P over T is a constant. So Gay-Lussac's law is P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. This gives us a linear graph. And if the volume of the gas is now larger for the same temperature as before, we're going to get a smaller pressure, so the gradient becomes less steep. So here we have all three gas laws. Now let's combine all three. From Boyle's law, we know that PV is constant. From Charles's law and Gay-Lussac's law, both the volume and pressure are proportional to temperature. Why don't we take their product, multiplying them together, and say that they are proportional to temperature? So taking T to the left-hand side, that's going to equal to a constant. So after all the hard work, we now have arrived at this gigantic combined gas law. That's P1, V1, over T1 is equal to P2, V2, over T2. So that's the combined gas law. In the next video, I plan to turn this equation into the ideal gas equation. So be sure to stay tuned for more physics. Thanks for watching.